Welcome to the map Brandy Hills in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 for a video commentary after a very long time in a good against evil matchup between Mordor versus Gondor. Blacksmith I'm opening into the Hobbit Peregrine Took and the soldiers are marching forward immediately without losing any time to deal economical damage to Mordor who will try his best to deny that from happening. Double Orc with technology, that means early game is gonna be super strong, you will have lots of units upon the field, it will give you the chance to defend yourself, it will give you the chance to creep the map, it will give you also the chance to pressure your opponent settlements, as indeed one of the Orcs has already made it to the middle settlement from Gondor, who just recruited, uh, I mean purchased this settlement with the Hobbit, so the Hobbit will try his best to protect this, but the Orcs are dealing good amount of damage to the Gondor farms. In the meantime, the soldiers have arrived, but there is a slaughterhouse which is tankier because it's level 2. You can't repair it, but it will naturally be hard to be taken down by the soldiers. And fighting this, early eye, early heal, fighting this is not going to add too much to the table because every 28 seconds you will not get one more, but two more orcs. And now with the eye they will also deal more damage, so... And it's kind of difficult to attack the settlement because of the rocks on the ground. In order to attack that, you need to kind of get into this location. So you want to micro your soldiers here, you know, to this. So you can clump better to this area. So attacking from this or from this is not going to be too good. So the soldiers will uh, eventually die. And after dealing with them, Mordor can even go to the creep here. With three orcs, you can easily do that. Use one of the orcs as a bait to lure them away and the two remaining orcs can finish the lair. And also this settlement from Gondor has been totally destroyed. Hobbit was able to get cloaked in the last possible second. And also this farm is gonna go down from Gondor player Balin, who just building up the stable and the Knights of Gondor won't arrive there in time. So remember each farm will give you the food bonus, making the Knights cheaper. They used to cost 720, now the cost will go up to 760. Now it's only 40, but in the early game this is a lot. And Gondor has zero outside settlements, while Mordor has still uh, two of his. One Lambrimil over here, he has also Haradrims, he actually has two Orc pits, Haradrim Palace, and that's gonna be his first resource building in the base, towering up for the defense. What I like to do is also towering up here to protect this settlement over there, and, or here, you know, so you can protect these two settlements over there. And towers have a build time, so most people are greedy, they don't build it at the beginning. And it's kind of too late, when your enemy is in your base, building a tower, they won't build up, you know? Your opponent can keep destroying them over and over again. So the knights have arrived, their goal is of course to, you know, destroy the eco from Mordor, that's the best you can do. And he will have to get more than one knight for this, you know? Going for Ignite number 2, but super delete because he was forced to recapture the settlement over there. The, the start couldn't be worse for Gondor, actually. Now, the question is, what can Gondor do to have a better start, you know? And what people can do is play the early game a bit longer with a, with a potential soul barracks opening. Now, trust me on that one, if you lead your Hobbit with your two starting soldiers forward, it will be so much more difficult for Mordor to defend us. Because once the Hobbit hits, hits hitting level 2, he will keep one-shotting the Orcs over and over again. And when you fight with your Hobbit in your soldier line, so you put Hobbit into your soldiers, he will also level up way faster. Now you can stall the fight, maybe you luckily get your soldier level 2, and a level 2 soldier can easily kill like 3 Orcs. You might still not be able to destroy the settlement, but you will at least kind of keep him checked, Till your knights arrive and he won't be able to creep which will of course grant him lots of power points he already almost has industry in the first couple of minutes into the game so the hobbit is slowly but surely taking down this settlement over there uh, the stable level two he has now three knights in total that's what you need uh, to kind of keep destroying the enemy settlements over and over again mordor has a good looking beast and he also crept this troll layer, I believe, with the Haradrims, and he went for the outpost control. And going for the orc pit number 3, just to keep pressuring. Remember, the orcs will also give you power points, reward you for losing them. It will help you to reach the mid-game spike a bit faster. You know, you get um, your darkness available way faster. 
There are not many creeps remaining besides the goblin creep over there. And over there. And also the troll creep over here. Gondor actually took zero creep so far. That's going to be his first creep at the bottom right corner with the level 2 knight. Uh, you need in total 2 power points to turn your Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. His plan might be to rush Gandalf. He has only one uh, spot remaining in the base. So Mordor's eco is looking definitely better. So he has in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blacksmiths in total. That means he has now 30% discount. What you can do later on is you can demolish one of your structures to build a 6th blacksmith instead to just get the full value to get the upgrades as cheap as you can potentially get. And we have Pippin. Peregrine of the Tower Guard. And orcs are basically annoying. A level 2 orc pit also faster production speed. So instead of 28 seconds, it will only take you 24 seconds. And the Knights of Gondor have to retreat. They have also trolls up on the field. So trolls for the for the defense. He has now three power points in total. Might go for the Great Company. Now he's going for the Blacksmith, like I said. And also for his shields. Okay, that's interesting. Shields. Um, with the Great Company, maybe he can deal a lot of damage because the Mortar player has not many Rune Soldiers, nor many Trolls. He actually has only two Trolls upon the field. Uh, one of them is actually being used for offensive purposes. He's leading forward. You might be annoying and go for the Wall and kind of force your opponent to build, um, say it, a Tower. There comes the Great Company Rush with two Knights of Gondor with the shields. And also Bleeds. The third one is coming too with the shields. And now they will commit to the Troll Cage. Troll Cage. One more Troll. Might make it out. Won't make it out. And that will delete the level 2 Troll Cage by a lot. Troll can dance around the Rosie. I think he ate, he ate a Orc over there. He was damaged but now he's full HP. And that's super annoying for Gondor because the Grey Company can't get the chance to shoot. As Troll is running and the towers are melting the Grey Company in the meantime. Alongside with the Orcs. Bad trample into the runes. But the Knights of Gondor will be barely able to get away. Oh, close. In the meantime, the Troll was able to destroy this settlement over there. Going now for this settlement close to the Gondor Castle. And the Troll Cage has to be rebuilt. And again, it's all about time killing. So Gondor is... You know, Mordor is powerful in the lead game through, but so is Gondor, trust me. And with the Gandalf, you can easily turn every game around. Especially against evil factions, like, especially against Mordor, who has not really a big counter. Easy counter, like Lourdes, for example, is an easy counter. Rohirrim Archer Army is an easy counter. But, you know, you can get, of course, Mumu kills, step on Gandalf, but it's easier said than done. If Gandalf is aware, if he's paying attention, he won't be stomped. By our Mumu kills. But Mordor is still doing a phenomenal job. Be careful with the level 4. Who needs siege weapons, boys? Who needs siege weapons if you have all in one unit? All in one unit. I mean, no, not true. He can shoot. I mean, he can. He can throw rocks, but he can shoot flying units. That's his only weakness that he can't. By, by the way, I've tried everything in BFME. With enough leadership and enough trolls, you can even kill the Balrog. Quite easily, actually. Like 20 trolls. I mean, it's not quite easily. You still need 20 of them. But you can kill Balrog. Very quickly. Darkness, Eye, Witch King, and Drummer. Capture this one back. Um, he queued up two trolls in total. He has four power points. Might go for the devastation. I would not recommend it. I think you need darkness in this matchup. And you have good eco, so you don't need to go for the for the devastation. But he went for the devastation. He has now 4.8. Might go for the witch king. Um, the troll keeps shattering the beast, and each part which is broken will cost you in total 2.5k. So. The repairing this is going to be taking a long time. Gandalf is going to turn into the Gandalf the White. And this troll might also be able to finish off this part. And it's totally fine. I mean, even if you eat, like, 
you need to be full H uh, you, even if you are full HP, Easter will one shot you unless you have leadership. Here he should finish it, not run away, because you can't run away from Ganav. He will always be able to catch up to you. Your trolls can't outrun a horse hero. So Easter will one shot him, even though he's full HP. Unless you have a drummer troll or something like this, you know what I mean? Okay, so he has two trolls, three trolls punching their face. Uh, friendly fire is on. They're bored, they want to fight. Now the commitment on the outpost. With the knights, they have level 5, level 4. They have shields and Ganav leadership. A beautiful catch with the lightning sword. And the Haradrims on top of the outpost can't hurt these knights. With this much armor against arrows. The trolls are coming. A great company should be available very, very soon. Yes, sir. And he went for a Nazgul. Oh, that's a mistake in a half, boys. Like, no. I mean, I like the Nazgul, but I think here it's totally out of place. Don't do this. Like, you can do this if you are getting a rush in your base and you need help right now. So cheaper unit, of course, will be there very, very fast, much but faster. But it was not like he was getting pressure on the bees. So you had still the chance to wait. And now you had, you would have the money already. You know what I mean? So going for the Nazgul. Mm -mm, I don't like it. The outpost will be now re-attacked. The rune soldiers can't fight against Ganav. I see you will be used. But, uh, you know, the Cita will still fall down. There is a level 5. And the commitment with the Nazgul... Easter is available. Glad from Gondor that he saved it for the Nazgul. The Great Company won't be able to finish off the Nazgul. He will be barely able to get away from this situation. But the Strolls, what are they doing? Why would you ever commit to this? That's a, such a big mistake. You have no leadership, no armor leadership. That's the key to victory. And the Nazgul, out of no reason, is again going there and will go down to the Great company alongside with many many trolls suicided basically sacrificed for no good reason and also this troll will go down you know on a one situation without leadership you can't fight and the funny thing is with enough leadership kind of can't even hurt these trolls like Loki he can't even hurt them but it looks like he will get away history has a minute cooldown and this troll can always eat up an orc and regenerate back to full HP. Outpost control, drummer troll, I guess, guarding the outpost, but he won't be able to defend. Drummer is not a fighter, he's a supporter. And he's going for the Nazgul number two. There is no shot. He's going for the Nazgul number two. I mean, did he sign a contract or something? Did he sell out the game? This is the biggest troll I've ever seen. Mordor, after a phenomenal start, making repeated mistakes in the mid to late game, which gives Gondor a chance to fully control the entire map as the last remaining outpost from Mordor with zero protection will also go down to the Knights of Gondor. And Gondor now going for the marketplace, playing for the lead game technology, has the upgrades on the blacksmith as you can see the white glow animation, giving you more money, they are level 3 now, they will give you hella money, and with this much map control with level 3 farms all over the place, he will basically grow rich. He has 2,500, but he's investing them over and over again, going out for the Stoneworker, which is not against the rules. And at some point of the time, you might need it against Mordor. Because the way you know the way Gondor played wasn't for the lead game. It was for the for the early mid game. For the lead game, you need to borrow leadership. Boro could have been recruited a bit earlier to deal with the rune soldiers. Boro is faster than the rune soldiers. So you need to get him to level 4. He starts with level 3. So it should be quite easy. Nazgul is doing a good job for the map control. But that's all about it. He can't face this combination of Faramir and Ganav. Istari plus Warning Arrow will one-shot him. And Mordor has only two settlements outside. Which is, you know, still not bad. Remember he has double eco power point in the pocket. The Nazgul will be back very, very soon. He's going now for the Mumu kill pants, but I'm assuming this guy just doesn't like the Witch King, who is the best hero and the best unit for Mordor by far. So what you can do at some point of the time, you need to realize that you need that you fed your opponent a lot, right? And you need to realize that you will have to deal with the Eagles. So you can either go for the combos, or what you can do instead, what I like to do, 
is you can buy fire arrows, this one, upgrade, and then more the orc archers and put them on the movement kill. Now, here is the twist though. You can't target with your movement kill the eagle, but what you can do instead is you select the movement kill in the Nazgul. Now, all of a sudden, you can right click on the, on the eagle, and that will kind of. Ooh, beautiful catch! But we have the white wizard. It has to be good for something. Now, when you when you select a Muma kill with uh, archers, Haradrims on it, and a Nazgul or anything that can attack the eagle, you will kind of order your Haradrims or archers on top of the Muma kill to attack the eagle as well. And with the with enough leadership, with eye, darkness, drummer, they will kill the eagle super fast. You know, super fast. And the funny thing is, the Units on top of the movement kill are untargetable. You can't kill them, but you can't attack them. You will always end up attacking the movement kill. So that's the best part about the movement kill combination with the archers. And with the fire arrow, you will also deal bonus damage to the eagles. So this plus this combination. Haradrims have more range though. Because when you put Haradrims on top of the movement kill, they turn into Haradrim archers. So they act a bit different. The normal Haradrims, basically the same way like the Haradrims on top of the outpost, they also turn into archers, so they are not the same. Mordor has uh, not that much money, because he's going for the very expensive units, Mumma kills, they cost 1500 each and they can't be reduced. Um, they remove that, that the food bonus doesn't affect the Mumma kills. Mumma kills are very unique units, one, one of my favorite units in the game actually. Um, because they are, you know, win or lose unit. So they can die quite fast, but they can turn the game in a second. One beautiful trample can decide the outcome of the entire game. Charge attack. So you can one shot again off, you know? So I don't like the Nazgul though. I think the Nazgul doesn't really add a lot to the game. But kind of forcing the Gondor player to be clumped. So he has to cancel the Easter Light. Ooh, but now he can use it. Yeah, now the I think he should be dead. Yes. Because he's level 7. Ooh, but his arches on top of the Oof, what a hit. These are rangers, boys. Look their damage. With the statue behind, they also will deal. 75% more damage, and remember this troll still didn't have drama troll. There comes the lightning sword. Lightning sword will be able to catch. Look, it looks like it's hitting. That's why lightning sword is not good against movement kill. Because the lightning sword will always try to hit the units on top of the wall, on top of the movement kill, but it won't hit them. But you will miss the shot. So it's not very good against movement kills when they have units on top of that. So he keeps going for the uh, Nazgul revival. His uh, six power points still need a power point to get to darkness. Very important power point upgrade. And with the kill on the Nazgul and kill on the trolls, he is getting very close to the Eagle special summon, which can be game deciding. But you need some more archers. So the wall is looking amazing to me. He went for the Numenorian stonework, uh, reinforced gate, and the battle tower. So the archer, the towers will now hurt. And hit like an absolute truck. And kind of force the model player to go for the siege works in order to outrange the towers. You need to get catapults, you know. But even with catapults, the wall will uh, have to be hidden multiple times to be broken, because the Numenorean stonework will make your walls have 8,300 HP. 8,300 HP. So double the HP of a. Mordor Citadel, for example. And also, the, it's not about the HP only, you know, it's about the defense too. It's about the resistances. You can have 80,000 HP when a unit deals 50,000 percent more damage to you, bonus damage, then you will still get one-shotted. Ooh, talking about the HP and bonus and everything. Uh, the... Nice dodge. Okay, one of the one of the units have been killed. Focus on the movement kill. Gandalf will have to get away. And the troll is catching. Now you see the Haradrims on top of the... You, you see that? What I'm talking about? Lightning Sword? It's the perfect example. Now it's hitting. But now it's hitting. But you see how many shots it missed. Because as it's trying to connect to the Haradrims on top... Oh, 
<laughs> Friendly fire on. It's a very questionable move. Cloud break. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I think you don't need it. Uh, out of two reasons. First of all, if you manage the eagles well, they can farm you lots of power points. And the second reason is, cloud break costs you seven power points, while eagles cost you six. So it will get you to the AOD. Oh, I'm sorry, to the army of the dead a bit faster, you know. So Mordor is stalling, helping. Uh, I mean, staying alive, you know. Parami leadership is missing, of course. Uh, he has gotten zero experience so far, and also Boromir leadership is missing. He also went for Boromir, by the way, but he still needs a full level to get to unlock his leadership, which is super important leadership. Against Mordor, you need damage, raw damage leadership, armor, not that much. Because even with armor, your the trolls, if they ever get to you, they will smash you. We have finally Witch King upon the field for the first time in this game. The Nazgûls are fully committing. That comes the, and you see, without leadership, your rangers will even die to the. Oh, he is studied at. Oh my God! Don't lose the Nazgûl for no reason. Oh my God! Does he have lightning sword? Can maybe catch the Witch King. Oh, that's gonna be a nice, beautiful dodge. A beautiful dodge. Parami could be killed. One troll, send him off to Faramir. Uh, even workers are going to war. Why are you running, Faramir? Why are you running, boy? But we have the White Wizard. Just like in the movie, kind of guiding Faramir into the White Tower. But Faramir, just like in the movie, is not gonna be smart enough. This is Fata, Denethor, saying, You shall not come home until you die so gondor and mordor having a fight over and over again the lightning sword has been cancelled when you cancel it it will go on cooldown and um, the easter eve won't uh, hit the witch king for too much so keep that please all in mind mumba kill pen one thing about the mumba kill pen is if it hits level three all units produced at it will come out with level 2. So they will have a bit more armor, a bit more HP, a bit more resistances. The damage is not very important with the moment kill because as mentioned before, if you get the chance to trample, you will... Oof, oof, go for the... for the. Oh my god, what a fine hit from the Witch King. He will not die, by the way. He will not die. Beautiful. So the Nazgul health is 3000, the Witch King health is 4000. So Witch King, of course, being a bit tankier and also also has a different armor set. You know? And Troll HP is 2000. Um, trolls actually have a lot of HP, like more HP than Boromir, for example, but it's also about their armor set. They are super tanky against Swordmen, against Horses, against um, Pikemen, but not that tanky against Arrows, Heroes, or Fire Arrows. So level 3 troll cage. And the one uh, downside of the combos from Mordor is they cost a lot of power points. And without leadership they are totally useless. So you need to always babysit them. So these trolls have to be always around the combos. If, because if you ever leave them alone... Oof, the oh my god, the airlines have arrived. The Mordor airlines. Can't finish him off. The Witch King has to be kept alive. Do not focus on the on the like here going on the on the Ganaf. I like the idea, but uh, the 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 thing is, you need to always think about which kill do I benefit most from. So if you keep your two Nazgûls on the archers, you can't kill Ganaf. You know, basically you can't in a in a short run. When Ganaf is here with full HP, and the base is here. You can't kill him before he can make it to the base in, in, in safety, you know? So always go for the kill. Always go for the stuff you can actually kill to just this way farm power points. Darkness is on cooldown. It's going to be available very, very soon for the next big fight. Four power points almost in the bank for Mordor player Matthew. He has still space in the command points, so he can still get some more units up on the field. You know, this includes movement kills, but also more trolls. Um, again, he went for the fire arrows. I would love to see the archer movement kill combination. But again... Uh, like, now at this point, it's not even that you need it, because the, your opponent didn't even go for the Eagles, which was a major mistake to begin with. Um, send some... Uh, send the Drama Troll and Witch King close. 
and then you can one shot the tower so he's building a, up a defense he's being prepared for this you can also demolish his stone worker by the way you don't need to keep it uh, building damage leadership putting archers on top of the wall just like in the films and preparing for the ultimate defense against the forces of evil from mordor Lumbering worker dealing no damage but gives notification all the time it's super annoying by the way if a lumber mill like do this against your opponent put a lumber mill worker out of no reason on an enemy farm and he will keep getting notification our farm is under attack you know and it's gonna trigger him it might actually lead him to quit the game you know siege war is going for the catapults very much needed against camping he kept the two uh, mordor guards in the base you know for the worst case scenario one more kills are come at me bro come if you can enter you cannot enter mordor beautiful okay so nazgul is back to full hp this nazgul too and the witch king as well now mordor is prepared for the ultimate battle and the question is can like here is the twist you can, uh, army against army fight Go oh my god oh no! wizard must pay <laughs> that's the thing if you cast a spell you will kind of stun yourself you can't move for like a two second period in this two seconds will hurt you kill you murder you the mumu kill daddy the daddy of the mumu kills the red thing on his on his thing that's the mumu kill daddy boys now the siege will begin you need to keep your katas protected though he's going into a very Ooh, son what a shot one shot one kill that's the downside of the of the um see it it's a down oof i can't even talk i always get excited when this stuff happening but here you need to feeding powerpoints for no reason ah you're fine so, um, there is an outpost which has protection. He has arches inside the outpost and one at the, one of them being outside. So, it has a lot of firepower. Do not underestimate that. You can take it down quite easily. If you send a Nazgul there, he will die in a second. Because the Stitcher also gives you resistances to fear. Um, which means the screech from the Nazgul is going to be pointless. Or from the Witch King. The Mumma kills are coming. All you got to do is keep the trolls and the Mumma kills next to the catapult. Catapult. Play the game slow and steady. And whenever you see this happening, you want to send your Nazgûls to the to the knights and punish them. Like, yeah. I think one of the Nazgûls has been killed before. But play it slow and steady. Slow and steady, boys. Now, the siege will begin. But as you can see on tell, the beast is super durable, right? It's quite tanky. So one catapult is not going to do too much. You need to bring more catapults. But I'm assuming he's been command points kept. Yes, he is and um the reason for this maybe might be the mumma kill spam they cost 40 command points each he has uh, two mumma kills here 80 120 160 uh, he has runes combos they also cost a lot of command points maybe losing some of them would be quite good that sounds wrong i mean some some of your runes some of your combos because this Condor is not planning to go for the Eagles. I think he want to stall the game out until he gets to EOD. So Gandalf is going to be revived. He was level 8. So it's going to be a 3 minutes, 30 seconds revive time. Pretty long. But we are playing it slow. Because he has only space for one catapult. There comes finally the second catapult. He's demolishing it and going for the Siege Forks again. Maybe the Knights have crushed it. I don't know. Just keep it protected. Oh, he will try to make it. Oh, beautiful micro from the Gonda player. If he can save the level, uh, he healed them. And now he's feeding some power points. And he's repairing even. So that's like trigger number two, my friend. Trigger. Yeah, that's a very strong ball, my friends, you know? That's why you need, like, it would be a whole different situation if you have, like, three catapults there. You know what I mean? The damage from catapults, despite it being a very strong ball, is kind of, I think it's hitting the tower. It's kind of decent. Yeah, it's quite, quite decent. If you have, like, three, four, um, then you will be in a fine spot. You also repaired the part of the wall over there. There's some arches on top of, uh, now you want to keep the moment kill. 
and trample, 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 trample. Oh! What is kind of doing there? <laughs> These are the most two valuable catapults. He will lose everything for two catapults. He lost knights and Ganoff again. Ganoff just returned from the death, from the graveyard, and yet to be sent back again. You know what I mean? And the part of the wall might and will be eventually broken. Go for a trample again whenever you. Oh, be careful. Don't lose the Nazgul like this. Uh, he is fine. He lacked damage leadership, this unit. Okay. Like two more shots and the part is broken the thing is even if it's if the part is broken you can't really just randomly go in there is everything gonna shoot at you with laser towers the part is broken yes so he's trying to fish the witch king in to the archers the archers are dealing good amount of damage with only 75 percent more damage leadership um but if boromir gets like these are the small things that can actually such do such a big impact you know what i mean like, the downside of this situation right now is uh, Gondor has still a lot of map control. We have a level 3 farm over there, here, here, and an outpost, which also gives you money from this place. So, he has to sustain in his eco. You kill the Ganoff through, but... Ooh, he just lost 2.5 kilo. That's unneeded. His command points kept, so all he needs to do is keep the money for rebuilding stuff, you know? And Mordor just needs to bring more and more catapults to the table. Ah, uh, look, this one came out first, and now the gate is open, but he can't come out. Come out. He has two catapults only. The Knights of Condor keep demolishing it over and over again. It's amazing. And also he's pressuring. But money is at this point not a problem anymore. Now I will tell you what the, what the, what the key to victory here is. You know, patience. You need to play the long game, the boring game, but it's needed to get the victory. It's arena after all. It's quick match. It's about elo system. It's all about getting the points. And sometimes you need to fight hard for your points. Like that's a very fine trade. See, he will lose. Uh, he just healed in the last second. Don't lose the witch king. What is witch king doing? Oh my god, that's bad. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. That's not a good fine treat. 12 power points versus 5. So Mordor needs 8. Mordor should get the power points a bit faster. Uh, go for a trample. I think the host player of this game is also Gondor. Yes, it's the Gondor. That's why he's able to do such thing. Hit, run. Oh, catapult, shoot at the own Muma kill. One more hit, and like you want, you want to protect your catapults, though. Like ba getting Balrog in in a few seconds or minute will win you the game, right? Because Balrog laughs about your defense. Your defense is not gonna do anything against Balrog, but the Mumma kill. Oof, it's a level ten, level ten. Yeah, so thank you, level ten. He is gonna use the heal. I think before he didn't use the heal, otherwise it wouldn't be available like this. I think he reached the well, and then he re regenerated one of the guys back at it again. Level 10 is hitting so hard. Oh, but he's gonna lose the level 10. Okay, so losing level 10, you see the power point differential? Whenever you treat catapult for a very highly leveled unit, it's okay to do that as Mordor, because you will win the power point war now the moment kill here is not doing anything he never recaptured this one does he need money not really he has 16.6k money at this point when you have command points filled and all you need to do is getting some catapults at a time you will grow rich he's gonna use the easter light on on the catapult Michael even for the third siege works uh, gondor is repairing the parts of the wall over and over again uh, because he also can't do anything else he has command points kept so playing the boring game, the long game. But can we blame Mord Gondor? Yes, we can. I mean, that's a very boring place, bro. Get out and fight. If you die, you die like a man. Don't play like this. <laughs> but Mordor should take the map first. You know, he went for the steeple at the outpost over there. Uh, he should play for the map first. Now, that's annoying as hell that Ganna was able to do that. Does he have lightning sword? He can even kill one of the one of the guys. He's trying to beat in the lightning sword. 
Oh, he's gonna catch both of them. He's gonna catch one of them. It's even Vorus. If you catch both of them, you can't kill because they will get both low, but you need to still use Istari. Now, Istari and Grey Company. Yeah, he's gonna do the Istari Grey Company combination. And that's gonna be the Nazgul down. But he has still two catapults. They are dealing good damage, as you can see and tell. So he should aim on the structures inside the base, especially the well and the statue. If he can take them down, it's going to be amazing. Because they also feed a lot of power points, you know what I mean? Yeah, just go for the, for the units and for the... Statue. The statue is nice. Go for the statue. Nice, it's a lot of power points. Almost 15. Ooh, for a hit, 15. The archers are not dealing too much damage to the catapults. Ooh, nice dodge here in the, with the last guy. Even though it's only level 2, it's not a strong... What a fine hit. They have armor leadership from Ganath, that's why they didn't get one-shotted. Yeah, just do it. Go. You can also shoot over the wall, right? You don't need to go like this. Ex exactly, exactly. You need to demolish the structure. Otherwise, look the power points you will get from it. Half a power point, you see? Like, those buildings are so valuable. That's why you need to always demolish them. And th that's what I like to see. That's what he should be doing all along. Oh, that was close, actually. He's gonna use the eye. Beautiful hit. But he will die for this. And again, go for the statue. The Witch King should be a bit closer. Like, this guy's feeding now. This Mooma kill for a reason. Oh, I mean, Mooma kills are, you know, feeding a bit more than the well. Not much more, though. Only a bit more. Going for the towers. But I think it looks like Gondor is going to get it a bit faster. And here, he will get also power points. Yeah, he's going to kill, destroy some catapults. And each catapult will give him also some power points. And he's only one and a half power points away from getting to the EOD, while Mordor needs uh, four. So I'm gonna actually do something that I don't, normally don't do. Let's skip forward a little bit. <laughs> so what's the plan? He's bringing everything here, and Ganav is farming power points. Beautiful it, beautiful it. Okay, nice. Ooh. Nine power points versus 17. So three power points away. Oof, what a hit. Just trample the knights. Does he, did he get it? He might get it soon. 18 to nine and a half. Nine, nine and a qu three quarters. To 18 almost. Okay, he's breaking part, a lot of parts of the wall. That's going to be a fine hit. A boom. Uh, he only hit the bat. Never mind. He still killed two. two. But I think um, Gondor has gotten it. Oh, he's not going to demolish this. It's going to be so good for Mordor. Watch this. Oof, what a fine hit. Oof, what a fine hit. Oh my god, that's going to be so close to the race to the... Oh my god, if he doesn't demolish this, bro. Just go for the statue. Oh my god, Boro will get so much experience from this skill. Never mind. Go for the statue and you will get it. It's gonna be so good. The problem is, if they get it at the same time, Gondor can use the EOD to kill the Balrog, bro. Oof. <clears throat> Ooh, son. Now he got it, right? Yeah, he got it. He got it. But also Mordor got it, basically. Going for Look, you see the catapult damage against buildings? It deals hella damage, boys. Watch this. Bam, bam, bam. Oof. 20. Okay, he has also the power points now for the Balrog. Um, you don't want to do this, though. He got level 4. But here, he will just use AOD, uh, I believe. He needs to use it. Yeah, he needs to use it. Uh, he didn't use the Ignite, though. Just fly away. Exactly. Fly away. Nice. Keep doing this because you have more time remaining than EOD. You need you stay on the field for a minute, and EOD stays on the field only for 25 seconds. So you can keep dodging him, you can keep flying. 
But he can split the EOD. That's something you can't do. Nice. So, so the EOD didn't do much at all for Gondor. And Balrog is still the time of his life. There are a lot of units though. And he's gonna... Pew! Ah, now, now it's a different story. Now this guy has no VIP. Oh my god, he didn't have time anymore. Otherwise, Gennaf could have been able to kill him with the Easter or Lightning Sword combination. Now, the summons are goners, you know. I mean, of course, flying away from the bees will cost you time. Oof, oof, oof. Quadro kill for Gennaf. Lined up, uh, lined up stuff. He's getting some random moment kills upon the field. Now he has command points, space. Just fill it with a, a lot of catapults. A lot of catapults. Now, what can be done in this situation, right? As Mordor. What you can do is you make, you stop making Mumu kills. Let, let's be real. Your Mumu kill is not going to do much in, in this situation. What you can do instead is you make 3-4 combos, 4-5 trolls, 2-3 two, drama, two drama trolls, which King Darkness Eye, and you go in the base. And in the laser towers, even though they are annoying, your army will be so incredible tanky, your combos. They will hit like a truck and they will absorb so much damage. And whenever the enemy horses will try to make it to your catapults, if your trolls, you know, if your trolls can catch up to them, your combos will shred them. But these two combos, they never contributed anything to the fight. They are still level 2 because they bought the banner, not from the experience, you see? They are not shooting. And the Witch King... Um, one thing I need to say... Oof, that's gonna be a big blast. Oof, son. Oh my god, almost level 10. One thing I need to say is, in the ultimate late game, you don't want to fight against Gondor. You know, too many summons. Uh, he never chose the eagles, but he can choose the eagles. In addition to that, he has War of Power, you know. He doesn't kill the trolls or deal too much damage to them, but he can disable them. He can knock them away. Mordor on the other and on the other side can actually go for the oof. Mordor on the other side can actually go for the uh, call the heart. You know, call the heart, amazing tool to just keep out spamming your opponent. It will fill up your command points. You can lose, use it, get full command points again. Lose your army, use it. Because at some point of the time, it's not about um, feeding anymore. When your opponent has already all the power points, you can't feed, technically, you know? So you can just out spam him. And the Call the Heart in 2.2 is affecting all the structures. It affects the Mumma Kill Pan, the Troll Cage, the Orc Pit, the Haradrim Palace, and also the Siege Ward. So you can, oof. Get units everywhere. So Mordor has now buffed the outpost control, going for a triple siege situation. He has money like crazy, he has 25k in the bank. Gondor, not that much, obviously, because he was investing a lot of money into the defenses. Going now for the catapults himself. Oh, the water of power, we missed it, didn't even kill them. But oh, son, this Mumma kill is crazy! I think that's the same dude, level 8. Oh my god! Oh my god, how many times? He can't even revive this Gandalf, he's poor now. You see, economy advantage, even in the ultra late game. He invested too much time, too much money into the walls. And he never demolished the structure, that's a major mistake. How can you contest with a faction that is designed for the eco? Industry, scavenger, devastation, free orcs. And free to revive heroes like Nazgûl and Witch King. Mordor's late game is still crazy. And Mumma kills are one of the main reasons for this. So, EOD and Balrog have been used at the same time. So, they will be available at the same time. This catapult is doing a good job, actually. Nice. I didn't know that you can shoot over the hills here. That's amazing. For the, for, that's an anti-camp situation, by the way. If your opponent is camping, that you can use the catapult or siege to shoot over the wall makes the siege from this location much more reasonable. And also here, I mean, the range is crazy from Katas. So your towers can never reach up to them, you know? Gondor is poor now, all of a sudden. All of a sudden he's poor without even reviving his Ganov. That's how poor he is. Because again, rebuilding this part of the walls costs you 2,500 and you can't do that endlessly. You will at some point, unfortunately for you, run out of resources. Mumma kills are doing a good job defending. Bam, 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 bam. 
He's feeding the knights for this. Eagles will be special summoned, potentially. That comes to Baldrock, killing his own catapult. He's gonna fly in. So, Boromir is gonna welcome him. Just use Breath Fire immediately. Yes, sir. Bam, bam, bam. Did he catch uh, Boro? He killed most of the EOD, though. That's amazing. He killed most of the EOD. The King's Landing, boy! When he flies, also he damages the Eagles. Eagles damage themselves, but he died. Um, that's gonna give him power points. Now you can call on the Rohan allies too, to keep destroying the catapults, but for now you can do that with the Eagles, without any problems. Nice, who? But I think Mordor got this game. Lots of mistakes have been made in this game. Mordor played it at the end of the day though, clever and also patient. It's the key to victory. Uh, he traded his catapults for valuable knights and um, they give you more power points so they basically end up getting the power points unlocked a bit f uh, equally that's kind of lucky for mordor though because if Mo gondor would have gotten the power points sooner at the eod he could just you know get a lot of momentum use the power points uh, eod here offensively take down the outpost or oh, call the heart have been used for the insane production speed and now his command points kept has plenty of catapults going for the devastation gondor last stand he is poor he's starving to death and that's the power of mordor that's and these players by the way are equally skill leveled right matthew and balin it's not like this player is way stronger than this player and also the gondor player was on host so mordor definitely doesn't feel weak at any stage of the game, despite the mistakes of the two Nazgûls without the Witch King, Mordor still got the W in a, for me personally, perfectly even match between good and evil. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.